If I look worse for wear right now, it's because I am. Welcome to the recap of Love Island in the Game, Volume 9. A buckle in, because it's going to be a big one. I feel like I start like most videos on this channel on the recaps. Buckle in, it's going to be a big one. But today's episode basically disappointed me to beyond belief. I was fuming, I was raging, I ranted in stream for so long. I know it sounds so stupid, but wait until you hear what happened this week. And if you've already played it, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. If you haven't already played it, if you don't want spoilers, go play the game now and come back. If you don't mind spoilers, let's get into it. I had so much genuine excitement when we started this episode because we were gonna have to work out whether or not Jude and Uma were going to be coupled up, whether there was something going on, or whether or not we were going to be fine and ready to go. And I'm delighted to say that Jude did not couple up with Uma. But hey, Mish did. And that wouldn't usually bother me. But as we get on to it, I will tell you more about why that is, in fact, the worst thing that could have happened. We also found Roberto, the guest host. He was in Double Trouble, if you remember him. I can't remember what he was like in Double Trouble, but he seems pretty cool in this episode, at least. So he was literally just there to push people around. There was not much personality to him, but there didn't need to be. We decided to stick, as you know, from the last part. And so did Jude. So it was really lovely to see that he decided to go strong. His heart heart was completely with us, his head was completely with us, which is why it's so nice that we we managed to have that time, you know. Henry also decides to stick, so he was a little bit shocked when Kat and Lyle came out together. Kelly and Finn both stuck as well. Hamish twisted with Uma, which was great because Natasha had twisted with Stefan, so at least that's like, that's okay, that makes sense, that's not a problem at all. And we had a conversation with Stefan as well, and basically said to him, hey dude, I really like you as a friend, but we are, there's never gonna be anything between us ever. That is, you know, I'm solely Jude's. That's it. That's how it is. That is how it be. And at the end of the recoupling, Henry was sent home because Kat twisted. So it was very interesting. As Henry goes, he was quite rushed out the door. And as he goes, there is an option for us to do a choice, which is to find out information that he has for us or to just send him home and say we're not interested. That's not a gem choice, weirdly, but it's, it makes sense why it's not, because we say to him, yeah, go on, tell us what we need to know. And he just says to us, you're a smart girl, Iris. Basically, watch your back. That was really helpful, Henry, that one line. That was, that was great, thank you. Great, see you later, bye. It gave us nothing. We then go into the kitchen and we're all having a conversation and we decide to talk about the vibes we have in each of our couples. And every couple one by one by one goes around and says what kind of vibes they have. And everyone says that they basically have some good vibes, which is really lovely, including us and Jude. And things are looking really good, really strong, really coupled up. There's no need to turn heads. It's not gonna happen. We are gonna be good forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. <coughs> In this episode as well, we also find out that Hamish and Lyle know each other. They met before, but we have not yet found out why or how they know each other. We also find out that Jude definitely got our letter, which is fantastic and I'm so pleased. We spent 29 gems on that for it to pay off by him being like, oh yeah, I got the letter. It smells like you. And I slept with it under my pillow every night and it was like you were here with me. And you got my letter, right? I did. I kept it tucked under my pillow. Okay, so Jude definitely got the latter. Did it smell like me? Yeah, it helped me to imagine that you were next to me. Oh, I just want you to know I was beyond faithful while you were gone. Yes, Jude! Even in the challenges. The Kessa girls were nice enough, but there was no competition. When you already feel the way I feel about you, it's not even a question. Nothing could have made me twist. It's like nobody existed in there for me. I'm not gonna ask about your Kessa experience because you're here with me. That tells me everything I need to know. I think the boys are talking about how much he likes us as well in a later part in, I think maybe in episode two. Jude also tells us that he is 100% faithful to us, which is amazing because that's exactly what we're doing too. And he says to us, which I will say in hindsight is incredibly cheeky. He wants to leave the Finn drama in the past. No more Finn drama. It's just me and him, Iris and Jude against the world. So we have a 29 gem option to go onto the day beds with Jude. Now I take this option. In hindsight, I wouldn't have done and let me explain why. It starts off with Jude telling us a story about a time where he was traveling. I think he said he was in Bali and he wanted to go in this particular hammock. He waited for this hammock to become available and it didn't. So he went down one night at midnight into this hammock 
and it was available so he got in the hammock and he woke up in the morning and there was a cat on his chest and then there's the option to do bits that is it it's do well it's do bits or kiss or just like cuddle and we opt to do bits because we're out there you know we've paid 29 gems to do this option i don't think it was worth 29 gems 17 maybe if it was a go all the way option definitely would have been worth 29 because i really love how fusebox writes those scenes but this one just didn't rock it for me and i was already kind of in a in a bitter mood because of that a little bit i can't lie we get a text right then when we wake up in the morning that we have a new challenge which is called spice breaker hamish makes a quip about how it's going to be being blindfolded and forced to taste different spices I feel like that could have been really good but it's not we get to this challenge stage and it seems a little bit like the heart rate challenge we're going to be going around and doing some sexy dances and having to cool down the islanders with a bucket of cold water that we pay 10 gems to take from uma so we have this bucket of cold water as all of the people go around and they do their thing and we get some sexy dances and Hamish makes a little bit of a pass at us and Jude makes a definite pass at us and basically ignores everyone else. And we're haphazardly throwing the buckets of cold water over all of the boys. But when it comes to Jude, we'll just sexily call him off with the bucket. It's fine. It's good. I actually don't know what would have happened if I hadn't taken the bucket from Uma. Maybe she would have been calling everyone down. So please let me know in the comments down below because I really don't know. Then it gets to the girl's turn. And we see that Uma is dancing very, very sexily for Jude. And she's not being silent at all in the fact that she... 100% is into Jude. She is beelining for him. She's being spicy. Jude is being spicy in his dances. So they both win as best spicy dancer, which is amazing. Good for them. Only we find out what they have won is a prize, a date. And they're going to go on a date together. That is the end of part one. I am shocked, appalled, devastated to hear that Jude's going to go out with Uma. It is until part two where things start getting really difficult and I'm not happy about it. Before we get into part two though, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who watched the stream, tuned in, whether or not you've watched it back since as well. Thank you so, so much. But in particular, I want to say a massive thank you to Tear Song, Mike, Joey, and Amir D for the donations. I really, really appreciate you so, so much. It means a lot. It means so, so much. It helps me keep the channel going. I really do appreciate that. And I hope you're all having an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you so much for being so wonderful. And also thank you to Tearsong for doing a donation on behalf of 40 Link as well. That is incredible. I just appreciate you all so much. Also appreciate the wonderful channel members who without you, I would not be able to make this content consistently. So thank you so much. If you do want to become a channel member, there is always a link to join down below. Also, and there are currently five episodes of Too Hot to Handle Season 3 up for the members that aren't public as well as many, many, many bonus episodes from Too Hot to Handle Season 1, and there's even more on the way. But back to part two! And Uma, as always, shows off her true colours as being the biggest snake in the whole entire world. We're all getting ready in the dressing room. We're there, we're making sure Uma is looking her best for the date with Jude, our partner, and she is looking great, like a piece of tinfoil. And she tells us that she is going to go all out to be with Jude. She's going to throw herself into it. And she asks us the question, do you think Jude is going to like our outfit? We say very bitterly, no, he's not going to like your outfit. To which Jude comes into the dressing room and Uma says, do you like our outfit? And Jude says, yeah, I do. And Uma says, ah, oh, because Iris said you wouldn't. Way to throw us under the bus, one. B, Jude, what are you doing saying you like our outfit? Don't be rude to us in front of us. Like, come on. Come on, man. Jude also then goes and says that he's looking forward to his date. Again, right in front of us. Dude, come on. Understand the vibes of the room and what you should and shouldn't say in a context with someone you're not exclusive with, but you're pretty much that and you've told us that all you want is us. It also transpires that Jude will say whatever you don't say. So if you tell Uma that he's going to like the outfit, he'll hate it. And if you tell her that he's going to hate the outfit, he'll like it. So keep that in mind. We then have the option to go around and talk to all the different groups. Firstly, we go and speak to Finn, who's very flirty in the gym. You can pay 10 gems to get a bit close to him. We didn't opt for that, but we did also tell him we're not really interested in him anymore. 
We then spoke to Nat and said the same thing. We weren't really interested in her anymore. However, she confessed to us that there was no spark between her and Stefan. And it was kind of a brutal line, I can't lie. Do you feel that same magnetic energy with your partner? Honestly, Stefan and I have zero spark. Oh, okay. A soggy cardboard box in a damp field has more spark than we do. Brutal. We then go and see Lyle and Stefan who tell us a little bit about Hamish's like wild night out with Lyle. And it basically comes out that Hamish was in a queue to get into a club and the bouncer was sort of like turning him away. And Lyle went straight to the front of the queue and got in. And that it just had a little bit of negative energy between them. And it seems like Lyle then went on Liam's podcast. We finally got a podcast reveal from Liam for the full package. Typical Liam. Lyle made light of the situation and found it really funny. And Hamish took that person as well which to be fair it's not really something that should be made of fun of it's not really something that is funny in any way so i don't know if i agree with lyle on that one i also think wouldn't it be cool if you did a spin-off series fuse box where all of the characters can go on liam's podcast i think that would be so fun i'd love to see that happen last but not least we go and speak to hamish who is so lovely so wonderful and he's really you know hamish is just like a big old green flag i can't lie i'm really enjoying getting to know him more we also do pay 10 gems to get in the pool with him and splash around and there is an option to kiss him and there's a lot of sexual tension between iris and hamish just saying I feel like we could we could maybe be swung that way. And I was thinking that even at this point, before Jude and Numa got back from their date. Kat then comes up to us on the lawn as we're going back towards the villa and says that the islanders are basically all gossiping about us and saying that Jude is definitely going to have his head turned by Uma. And Kat says, no, I don't think so. I think that Jude is very loyal to you. And it was very nice to have that moment with Kat. And then... Jude comes back from his date with Uma and they're arm in arm and having a great time. And this will be the thing that I absolutely can never forgive ever. Jude has had his head turned by Uma. And I'm gonna say this very matter of factly because I went off on it several times in the stream. I was so unhappy <laughs> with this situation. He comes back from the date and he is gushing about Uma. And then he wanted us to prove our compatibility with him as well. And he did this by asking us essentially where we wanted to live in his hometown or in our hometown. And I said, well, I want to live in my hometown. And he says, oh, well, I want to live in my hometown. So clearly we don't belong together. It's one place. We haven't even spoken about where we're going to live. How are you already turning it down? It makes me want to cry. And then he goes on to say how much he likes Uma and how much she thinks that he's going to have to do some thinking and he wants us to go out of our way again to prove our compatibility. That's 17 gem option, or we can say nothing. Now, I did decide to say nothing. I don't think Iris would say anything. I don't think if I was in that situation, I would say anything because why do I have to go out of my way to prove to stay with him when he's the one that's come to us and said his head's turn? I don't wanna sit there and be like, well, actually, I think we should belong together. My notes from this are Jude likes Uma, big sad, because it was a sad moment. And uh, we do we do deliver this line though, which I love. Like, where is where is my Jude? Where is the Jude that joined us in the treehouse? Where is the Jude that we have had full blown coitus with on this show? I'm gonna say nothing. I don't think it's worth trying to prove anything. You don't say anything. Jude, don't leave me waiting. Jude turns towards Uma. He starts to walk away, but he looks back. I'm sorry, this is messed with my head. But the fact you've not said anything makes me think I'm right to be worried. No, I don't need to say anything. Oh, the frustration, the female rage. I don't need to say anything. This is a you problem. Oh yes, go Iris, woo! Now, I didn't make many notes from part three, but that was the end of part two and we headed straight into part three, which was episode 27. So we are making our way through this series. The episode starts with Hamish and Lyle in the kitchen. They are having that argument. They're having it out full time. What we did is we decided to stay on Hamish's side, we stuck up for him. Lyle was not being very nice at all, which is true. And I still stand by that. Also, Tirzan pointed out that because Iris is a chef and Hamish is bacon obsessed, they make a good couple. And I can't argue with that logic. And Callum V said it was a match made in the kitchen. Again, can't argue. The episode goes on and on and on. And I have to be honest, at this point, my head was still spinning from part two. So I'm really not sure what to think about that. Some time passed, Uma comes up to us 
during our girls chat as we're having a bit of a debrief you know and talking about how it went and Uma comes up to us and says Jude put me in the friend zone which is great don't get me wrong like it's fantastic that Jude put her in the friend zone I don't like the way this went about Jude swaggers over all calm and confident even though he broke our heart earlier and when I say that I don't say it lightly he comes over and he says that he was never attracted to Uma and he continues to gaslight us until it was never the way that he said it yes it was I do highly recommend if you were personally affected by this episode go and watch the live stream because a lot of us just commiserate about it together it'll always be up but I will leave it linked up in the i button as well and during this conversation Jude is telling us that he is ride or die for us he's dropped Uma, there's nothing else going on. Now, Joey in chat, Joey said that she was just going to ignore the fact that Stefan said all of this because it doesn't matter. Like she thinks it's so out of character for him. She's just going to pretend it didn't happen. And I agree. I said this in the stream as well. Jude and Stefan and Hamish to some extent, I cannot see them ever having that head spin moment with Uma. They've said they're all in with us, especially because Stefan has so much history with the MC. I don't get it. Chen, Henry, Finn in our playthrough, absolutely, I can 100% see that happening. But not Stefan and not Jude, 100%. I don't understand it. I don't agree with it. Jude is trying desperately at this point to make it up to us, but he's really not. He's staying cool and calm and collected. And he says to us, hey, I put together this little surprise for you, a grand gesture. Do you want it for 29 gems? No, I don't, Jude. And we did a poll in chat and actually, surprisingly, you all voted for the same thing, that we didn't want to take this option. I really don't think it would have been worth it anyway. I don't know what happened, so I cannot tell you, but at that place, I was so mad at Jude that it just absolutely wasn't going to happen. And then sadly, we get our hideaway option and everyone votes for Jude and Iris to go in the hideaway together. Jude says, I'm very happy to go. I'd love to, in fact, unless you want to go with someone else. Yes. The only other option for us, because we're playing the bisexual route, is Natasha. Unfortunately, I would have much rather have taken Hamish or rather turned it down completely. Where was my I don't want to go to the hideaway option? I just don't. Or alone. Can I go alone? If we had to go to the hideaway, could we have picked to go alone? We have a little bit of an awkward conversation with Natasha because she is so head over heels for us and we are so not into it. She brings out the box of goodies and we have to awkwardly be like, no, thanks. And the episode ends there. We get a text in the morning. I can't quite remember what it says. I'll insert it here. You read out the text. Islanders, it's time to grab your popcorn and take your seats. Tonight is movie night. Hashtag comedy or drama. Hashtag plot twist. Movie night already? But I'm really disappointed from this week's episode. I understand your need for drama. I understand that it needs to happen. And I do agree, it does need to happen. However, I do feel like Jude would never have done that. I feel so, so, so sad about the whole situation. I just don't like it at all. And it's more of a, I don't like it because I don't agree that it would have happened more than a, I don't like it, it shouldn't have happened, if that makes sense. I just think it was so out of personality for him. It gets me quite upset. But it's fine because hopefully next week all be forgiven. I would love it if Fusebox retconned this week somehow, but I know that's not going to happen. Like if we could wake up and it all be just a dream. 10 out of 10. Yes, please. But as always, please let me know what you think of this episode down in the comments below. A massive thank you again to the wonderful members of the channel. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being fantastic members. And a massive thank you to Tearsong, Joey, Mike and Amir for the donations today. You're all incredible and I appreciate you so, so much. I don't know if you can tell, but I am beyond shattered. I don't know why I'm so tired, but I am so tired. This episode has worn me out mentally and physically and I am so upset by the way things have played out. I'm so disappointed, I think is the best way to say it. I don't know. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. Subscribe to see more and turn your notifications so you know every single time I upload a video. Thank you so much for being here and watching me on my struggle. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.